Hello YouTube, I am Thorstein from Cinema Terror, and today I got the chance to rewatch a Japanese 1988 horror film that I haven't seen in about 15 or 20 years. This film is a strange oddity for sure, and the title of it is Evil Dead Trap. In Evil Dead Trap we meet a talk show host Nami, played by Miyuki Uno. She has a late night show where she plays home videos, usually of the shocking kind, sent in from her viewers. One night she receives a VHS tape, which seems to contain real snuff footage of a girl being tortured and murdered, who looks exactly like Nami. So to figure out if the tape is real or not, Nami and her crew tries to track down the creator of it and that leads them to an abandoned building, where they find out that the tape was only made as bait. Evil Dead Trap is quite a unique film. It's a Japanese horror film heavily influenced by Italian horror, in both storytelling, visual style and music. First off, the story is very confusing, at least to me. It's hard to get a grasp of what is really going on for a long time in this film, and I'm sure this will put many off the movie. If you're able to stay with it, then Evil Dead Trap does have some interesting elements to offer. The film is surprisingly violent. There is an eye scene that can rival the best from Lucio Fulci's masterpieces. And that's one part of the body I can't watch get damaged without getting queasy. The snuff footage that I displayed at the start of the film is also rough to watch. There is also rape in the film, which is treated by being filmed as a way to add nudity, in typical exploitation fashion. That being said, there isn't violence often during the film, and the most shocking stuff comes in the first part of it. After the first part, it becomes more or less a film with several people running around from a killer in a warehouse. Nami's friends are only there to be slaughtered off and add little else to the story. While Nami and a strange guy she meets there spends quite some time together and you will understand why in the end, unless you get where the story is going earlier on. They should have cut down the film about 10 or 15 minutes from its 102 minute long running time as there are periods of time where little of importance is going on. Which again is a reason why I believe many will slap the boring tag onto this film. I've also seen others dislike the turn it takes at the very end. And I can see why, as there was a more traditional, classy way to end the film on available, but I kinda like how they went with the added what the fuck bonkers factor. It's like something straight out of a Takashi Miki movie, and that's all I'd say about that. It's not all that easy to judge the actors of the film, as most of them get very little to do. I did like Miyuki Uno as Nami, and appreciated the effort by Aya Katsuragi as Masako. Some of the supporting cast actually came from the adult film industry, as this film was produced by Japan Home Video, a company that was there from the beginning of VHS distribution in Japan. They had an adult movie label called Alice Japan, where they took some actors that they wanted to promote from. Japan Home Video would also go on to give us other notable horror films, such as Tetsuo, The Iron Man, and Junk, amongst others. The director of the shows for Evil Dead Trap was Toshiharu Ikeda. He had worked on several exploitation films throughout the 80s, including Angel Guts, Red Porno, and Sex Hunter, before getting his first chance at a full-on horror film with Evil Dead Trap. He is able to show that he is a competent director on this, giving the film plenty of style and clever camera work. From what I've read, he supposedly wasn't a big horror fan, but it seems like he's done his own work, as there are plenty of Euro horror style being applied to this film. Sadly, this film did not open up the doors to give him more consistent work in the horror genre though, as he kept on working mostly within the exploitation genre in the years to come. I have seen one newer film from him, the 2001 horror film Iki Sudama, also known as Shadow of the Raid, but I don't remember all that much about it to be honest. Ikeda sadly passed away at an age of 59 in 2010. I also gotta give praise to Tomohiko Kira, who did the music for this film. It's heavily influenced by stuff like Goblin, and it surprised me to see that this was the first movie it made music for. And that it would only go on to score four other movies after this, three of them also being directed by Ikeda. He also worked on music for the Nintendo 64 game Bomberman 64 The Second Attack. That's quite a transition.
Evil Dead Trap is a film that I would recommend to the fans of the more brutal side of Japanese horror cinema. It has some shocking moments, a constant feel of strangeness and excellent music score. If you go along with it and look past the fact that it will leave you confused at times, then you have yourself a weird, sinister little treat of a film to enjoy. It's too bad that it drags so much at parts though. Evil Dead Trap gets a respectable score of 3 out of 5. Have you seen Evil Dead Trap? And how about these two sequels? I remember quite liking the second film the first time I saw it, and I am considering giving it a rewatch and a review. If Japanese horror films from this time period is your thing, then make sure to check out my review for the 1989 film Sweet Home. I hope you enjoyed this review of Evil Dead Trap, subscribe, like and all of that stuff, and I hope to see you again for more horror movie reviews here on Cinema Terror. Thank you.